does that come from? It's just the feedback. Okay. Good evening, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing this live stream. Welcome to this meeting of the South Cambridgeshire District Council Scrutiny and Overview Committee. My name is Councillor Grenville Chamberlain, and I am chair of the committee. May I ask those of you present in the council chamber to note that everything on your desk, including your laptop screen, may be broadcast at some point. The camera will follow the microphone being switched on, so councillors and officers are requested to wait a couple of seconds before speaking to allow the camera to catch up. If the fire alarm sounds, then please leave the chamber by the door near the top table and make your way down the stairs. Please do not use the lift. The safe assembly point is next to the marketing suite halfway along the business park. And may I remind, ask those who are watching the meeting via the live stream, please indicate if you wish to speak via the chat column. Please do not use the chat column for any other purpose. Make sure that your device is fully charged and that you switch your microphone off unless you are invited to do otherwise. Please ensure that you have switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that they do not interrupt proceedings. And if you have one available, please use a headset and hold the microphone close to your mouth. When you are invited to address the meeting, please make sure your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn off your microphone immediately. And while speaking, please uh, speak clearly and slowly, and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone. And please note that if we do need to vote on any item, we shall do so via the microphones, but only those present in the chamber can vote or propose or second recommendations. Committee members present in the chamber, I will now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, please turn on your camera and microphone, wait two seconds and say your name so that your presence may be noted. As I said earlier, my name is Councillor Grenville Chamberlain. I am the member for Hardwick. My vice chair is Councillor Judith Rippey. Could I ask members now to introduce themselves, and may I start with Councillor Anna Bradnam. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Councillor Anna Bradnam, one of the members for Milton and Waterbridge Ward. Thank you. Councillor Martin Kahn. Uh, Councillor Martin Kahn, one of the members for Clifton and Hinton and Orchard Park. Thank you. Councillor Sarah Chung-Johnson. Sarah's not present. Is she remote? Okay. Councillor Gavin, Gavin Clayton. Hello, I'm Councillor Gavin Clayton. I'm one of the three councils representing Camborne. Thank you. Councillor Graham Cohn, I believe, will be joining us later. He's uh, stuck at his, work, at his work in Avonbrooks. Uh, Councillor Dr. Claire Daunton. Um, yes, good afternoon. I'm uh, Councillor Claire Daunton, and I'm one of the members for the Fendit and, and Bullborn Ward. Thank you. Councillor Peter Fay. Peter's not here. Thank you. Councillor Sally Ann Hart. Hello, I'm Sally Ann Hart, Councillor Sally Ann Hart, and I'm one of the members for the Melbourne Ward. Thank you. Councillor Jeff Harvey. Yes, thank you. Councillor Jeff Harvey, I'm the member for Bullsham Ward. Thank you. you. Councillor Steve Hunt. Yes, Councillor Steve Hunt, one of the members for Hickton, Kensington, and Orchard Park. Thank you. Councillor Aidan van der Weyer. Uh, good evening. Yes, um, I'm Aidan van der Weyer. I'm the member for Barrington Ward. Thank you. Councillor Dr. Richard Williams. He's not present. Councillor Eileen Wilson. Also not present. And, oh, yes, of course. Councillor Judith Ripith, my vice chair. Um, good evening. I'm Councillor Judith Griffith. I'm one of the members for Milton and Waterbeach Ward. And we're also joined in the chamber by Councillor Tumi Hawkins and Councillor John Williams. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Are there any other members who I have not yet called upon? Not that I can, however, confirm that the meeting is quorum. Um, if at any time member leaves the meeting, would they please make that fact known to me 
so that it can be recorded in the minutes. Item two on the agenda is apologies for absence. Ian, can I ask, are there any, have we received any apologies for absence this evening, please? We have one apology from Councillor Cathcart and his substitute is Councillor Clayton. And may I just add to uh, your note about Councillor Cone, uh, Councillor Williams, Richard Williams, he's, uh, I think, caught in the same traffic jam. So Thank he'll be much. a bit late Thank as well. well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. Uh, do any members have interests to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? If an interest subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? May I ask, are there any? Councillor Bradman. Thank you, Chair. I'm a local member for part of the area encompassed by the North East Cambridge site, which is our item seven on the agenda. Thank and you I come very this much. matter afresh. Um, on that note, I'm also a member for the same ward, which encompasses the uh, item se seven item. Thank you very much. Those are duly noted. Are there any other declarations? No, thank you very much indeed. In that case, can we move on to item four on the agenda, which is the minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of July. Can we go through them page by page for errors or omissions, please? Page one, page two, page three, page four. Thank you. I will duly sign those in due course. We also have the minutes of the meeting held on Tuesday the 21st of September. That is page five in your compendium, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10, page 11, and page 12. And with that, is it your wish that I should sign? Uh, Councillor Daunton, my apologies. Um, yes, I just wanted to make a comment on the minutes to, to say um, how pleased I was to see the a detail that's been captured in the minutes. Um, it was a long detail meeting and um, it was really good to see it captured in the minutes and to have that as, as a record actually for our own use in future. Yes, no, it's very helpful. Thank you for that comment. Um, with that, I will in due course sign them as a true record unless anyone objects to that. Agreed. No, thank you all very much indeed. Item five on the agenda is public questions. And we do have a question from Mr. Daniel Fulton. So, Mr. Fulton, could I invite you to please uh, briefly ask your question, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to address the committee today. Um, just within the past half hour, the Fuse Lane Consortium uh, has been advised by Council that the matters to be raised today in this question should instead be referred uh, to the police for a formal investigation. As such, I am going to decline to ask a question today, uh, but I do want to state that I appreciate being given the opportunity to ask a question, and I appreciate that Councillor Hawkins took the time to attend the meeting to answer it, and I wanted to thank her for that. And uh, I'm, I wanted to apologize for not being able to give notice that the question would be withdrawn earlier, uh, but thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, can we move on then to item six on the agenda, which is the uh, general fund median term financial strategy. And I'd like to invite Councillor John Williams to introduce the paper, please. Sorry. Before we, oh, the, the, light, the stream had stopped for a moment. <sighs> Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I, actually, I mean, um, Peter and I are here in sort of listening mode 
with this, and this has gone through um, council. Um, as you know, the government spending review um, will be announced in a couple of weeks' time, um, and obviously it's difficult to judge in the current economic circumstances what that review will be. Um, we can surmise that the government will be looking for uh, reducing the public debt, and uh, that could mean obviously reducing um, support for local government or restricting local government, but it's very difficult to, at this moment in time, to foresee what will happen. But we are both happy to um, take um, questions, but in particular we're happy to hear you know, any suggestions or views you may have on the MTFS at this stage. And Peter will ask any, answer any questions that you have, technical questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, members, Councillor Bradnell. Um, just a quick one. Just for, this, for the sake of the um, clerk of the meeting to register that Councillor Richard Williams has arrived. Good evening. I hope the traffic was not too bad. Members, questions? Councillor Daunton. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I was just wondering if um, Councillor Williams might uh, talk us through the um, plans for inflation and particularly for possible wage inflation. My microphone isn't working. Give me a second. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Right, sorry. Um, I'll just give a, a brief overview of the financial strategy, if I may, and then I'll, I'll come to some specific questions that I, th I think were raised previously and, and also your question, uh, Councillor Daunton. So the medium-term financial strategy um, is looking at the period up till 2026, 20, 27. So we're looking at a relatively lengthy period of five years. And five years in local government finance is a very long time, as, a, you know, as has been seen over the last few years. Um, I think the main things to look at are probably the tables within the report. Um, so if you go to the table on... So there's a, a table that lists our, what we believe our resources will be available and what we believe our spending is going to be. I think that's on page 17. 17, right, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so on page 17, yes, there you go. So, so it shows you there our estimated resources. So we've had a look at council tax. We've estimated where we think the tax base will go. The assumption we've made at the moment is that there will be continue to be a five pound increase allowed in the settlement. We've then got retained business rates. Now, you'll notice on that line that um, the expected business rates for next year is rather higher than in future years. Um, for a number of years now, there have been suggestions that um, the funding of local government would be reviewed. And one of the parts of that review is to um, completely change the way business rates is distributed. Um, it's likely that when that occurs that um, district councils like ourselves will see a reduction in funding and funding will then uh, move to counties uh, because there's been an undertaking made in the past that um, the fair funding review will look to address the problems with social care funding. Now we do know that uh, uh, Boris Johnson announced recently the increase in national insurance contributions. So obviously, that longer term, that's going to be part of the solution, but my suspicion is that won't be the complete solution and that there still will be some uh, change in, in, fair fund, in the fair funding review to address that. Um, new homes bonus, uh, we've got a million pounds in for 23-24 onwards. 
We don't really know exactly what's going to happen here. The government had a, in, introduced a review of the new homes bonus scheme as it was. Um, the proposal was to change that significantly. So I think what we're likely to see is a reduction in the sort of figures of two and a half to three million that we have been receiving down to around about one. We don't really know, but what we do know is it probably won't be nil now as we had previously assumed because the, the um, consultation has closed and we're expecting a response in November when the spending assessment is, is, comes forward. So um, that's where we think we are with our funding. Um, when I produced uh, the um, expenditure side of things, I was reasonably confident that um, on that side of things, things were relatively stable. <laughs> but that is anything but the case now. <laughs> and, you know, it, again, uh, the strategy was produced over the summer, uh, and we were thinking that 2% inflation was probably, probably reasonable to assume. It's, we haven't seen high levels of inflation, but obviously since then we've seen the issues with increases in fuel, um, and obviously that has a knock-on effect to other costs that the authority has to bear in relation to um, supplies, services, equipment, and those sort of things. So it's a little bit difficult to, to ascertain quite what is going to happen with, with inflation going forward. Some commentators are suggesting it's, it may well be a um, short-term effect. I've looked at other commentators uh, suggested that there may be longer term. So it's quite a difficult one to decide how we're going to deal with this in the medium-term financial strategy. So whilst I thought it was difficult enough trying to assess the resources that were going to be available to us, it's now become more difficult to assess how much our costs are going to be as well. So I think that's something we're going to have to grapple with over the next couple of months uh, as the budget comes together. So um, so that's, uh, I think that was your question, Councillor Daunton, sort of around inflation. So it's a very good, good question. And um, I think, um, you know, any insights we can gain from, from experts in the field of inflation um, would be quite helpful, but I'm not sure they can know any more than I am or anybody else, to be quite honest. So um, I, th I think the message is, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty around with local, local authority finance. The only bit of good news, I think, really at the moment is that the Fair Funding Review does look as if it's been pushed down the road again. Um, we had expected it initially in 2021. It was delayed till 21-22. It now looks pretty certain it's going to be delayed till 23-24. However, in, in some of the other um, commentaries I've been looking at, there's a suggestion that the government will introduce a three-year funding programme which may actually suggest it's being kicked even further down the road. But again, I think when we get to November, we will know that, so we'll know a lot more on that. So, um, so I think that's probably all I can say in relation to the, the assumptions and forecasts that we have there. Um, I did have a couple of questions that were sent through prior to the meeting. Would you like me to answer those now? Yes, please do. Yeah. Um, so there was a question about the savings we've included within the document. We have only included ongoing savings at this stage. Um, so we haven't, we haven't put in any one-off savings for 22-23. Um, those will obviously come to light as part of the budget process and as those, as those come through, we will then add those in as appropriate. Um, talked about inflation a bit. Um, Business rates. I mean, this is a this is a big question. Business rates, really, because um, whilst uh, business rates came in, um, whilst fifty percent retention of business rates locally came in in thirteen fourteen, there have been so many changes since then. We've got to the stage really that the business rate system does need a thorough review. Um, now, whether it'll be abolished or whether there will be a review, um, I'm not entirely sure. The fair funding review suggested we would originally move from 50% from local retention to 100% local retention. They've now said probably 75% local retention. But again, if that's part of the fair funding review, I suspect that's probably a little bit down the road before that, before that gets resolved. I think it's fair to say it is a difficult nut to crack. 
I think um, successive governments have tried to try to do something with business rates to make it fair. I think pretty much everybody would accept that the current business rates regime isn't particularly fair in that it does, you know, we're getting rates from businesses that have property. Those businesses that don't work from business, business premises aren't paying business rates. So, you know, there does seem an inequality there, which I, I would suggest needs to be addressed. Um, we have historically done really well from business rates here. We're, we're within the top 10 in the country for growing our business rates baseline. Um, and it's fairly obvious why, I guess, with, with the development that we've seen and, uh, and the businesses we have on the um, science park, etc. So I think any move away from business rates, I'd be a bit nervous about in terms of our, fi our financing, given how well we've done. Um, I mean, there has been some talk in the past about a system of um, taxing profits uh, locally. I'm not quite sure exactly how that would work, but I mean, that's just been a suggestion. So whether that's anything that's really being seriously considered, I probably doubt it at this stage. Um, but yeah, I, I think business rates does need reforming, and I think everybody would accept that. But I, I would like, you know, any reform I'd like to see a good consultation that takes everything on board um, and that we don't have something done to us that, um, that actually is a detriment, uh, detriment to the district. Um, I think there's a question about the impact on Brexit. It's difficult to be sure on that one. Um, you could argue some of the pressure we've seen on, on inflation, etc. is as a result of Brexit or is it COVID or what is it really? So, um, my guess would be the impact on of Brexit would be to see an increase in costs. Um, but how much is going to be done to fix it, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know whether there's any, any questions or comments or, or thoughts about the strategy, or, or any advice, in fact, on what's going to happen with inflation. Because it, <laughs> it'd be great to, to know. It would be great to know what to do. But we, we will obviously have a look at uh, what commentators are saying, seeing, seeing what the trends look like. Um, and we'll, uh, well, I hope you're not asking me, because no. my, my crystal ball has run out of fuel. <laughs> I do, however, have a couple of, of requests, if I may. Yeah. And the first relates to the tables that you show. Where they split over a page, could we carry the titles through to the next page as well, so that you can see? You don't have to keep flipping back to make sure that you're still looking at the right column. Alternatively, keep the tables on one page. Um, either would, would help be helpful. Um, I think the, the thing that interests me with particularly your comments in relation to business rates and the deficit impact of one and a quarter million this year. And it then goes on to say that financial forecast assumes neither a surplus or deficit in the period to 26, 27. Can you just explain exactly what that means? It's on page 20, paragraph 41. Are we assuming that we have a deficit impact of one and a quarter million for each of the years through to 26, 27? Um, I'm, I'm just not clear on that. Paragraph 41. final sentence, the final form cast assumes neither a surplus or deficit in the period to 26-27. While you're just looking around, Pleased to say that councillors Peter Fain and Graham Cohn have joined us. Welcome, gentlemen. And similarly, Richard Williams, Councillor Williams, welcome. Did you find it, paragraph 41? Yeah, sorry, I didn't find it either. Okay. So um, 
So the, as part of the process, <laughs> um, yeah. So as part as part of the process, we'll obviously try to plug the gap that we've currently got. We're suggesting there's a gap of about 4.489 million. So we're going to be trying to identify plugging that gap as soon as we possibly can. Um, clearly, the um, transformation program that is uh, that is being under underway at the moment that's just going to be a significant contribution to that. So we're expecting that to, to meet about half of those half of that gap. So we're going to then need to concentrate on how we plug the rest of that gap. But um, equally, having said that, the gap that uh, we're reporting now has probably already changed based on what we've uh, oh, yeah. what we've just discussed. So I, I think there's still quite a bit of work to be done to identify what we believe that gap now is and how we're going to tackle that. Fine, thanks. But can I be clear? Are we expecting to have a collection fund deficit of one and a quarter million for each of the years through to 26, 27? So the collection fund deficit is, is just for the one year at the moment. Okay. So fine. each year, yeah. So each year we reassess it and there'll either be a surplus or deficit depending on how collection actually goes compared to our estimates. Thank you. So that's all I know about that. Yeah, that's fine. I have one, one further point, and that relates to uh, paragraph 57, which is the COVID-19 costs. And it's the, the very last um, bullet point, which refers to re reduced income aligned to business confidence, um, brackets, commercial rents, and planning applications. Can you quantify that? Well, I've got it on page 24 of my pack. It's under subsection 7, COVID-19 costs. Yeah, so um, it has been assumed that there will be some additional costs included in the 2022-23. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we have, we've have we obviously assumed there will be some additional costs in 22-23. Sorry, what was the question? It was, it was in relation to the final bullet point. Reduced income aligned to business confidence. Are you able to quantify that? Um, I think that's something we'll need to quantify over the next couple of months. Um, I mean, we have seen some reductions in 21, 22. Um, yeah, we'll need to we'll need to assess that as the as the, as the budget con continues. Uh, in all fairness, we are, I believe, looking at the first draft. And yeah, we will so we'll see a further update of this. Yes, yeah, so probably what I should have said is that. Um, uh, we've changed the way we do that this, this year. We, we produced a draft right at the start of the budget process, which gives us a sort of an idea of the sort of gap and so that we know what we're working towards. However, um, as the budget process continues, we'll need to refine this probably more than once, I would suggest, so that when we get through to February and the budget is clean, we'll have a, a very, probably quite a different, a different view of it. So, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Thank you very much. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Chair. Um, list, reading this and, and listening today, um, and generally the, the, the political atmosphere at the moment, I, I feel like I'm living in a, in a copy of the Emperor's New Clothes. Um, 
and somebody's somebody's got to stand up and point and go, <laughs> he's got no bloody clothes on, excuse my language. So I'm wondering, to avoid doing that, are there examples, and I sorry, that's not meant to be directed at any individual, or it's, it's a general feeling I'm getting of, of, of the uncertainties that, uh, that people are having to deal with um, and trying to make these predictions for five years, which is nigh impossible, I would have thought, with any, with any real confidence and, and solidity behind it. So I'm wondering, are there people in your position Peter, the, the heads of finance of other local authorities. I'm taking it you, you have some sort of network. Are there examples where there are local authorities who feel that they, that they are, have a more certain base on which to base their finances? What's, what's the kind of best practice or best models that are out there? Is there anything that we can, can glean from them that we can uh, to introduce into our own forecasting system? I mean, I think, I think the reality is that uh, all authorities are facing the same issues that we have. Um, you know, council tax would prob is probably the most stable source of it, our income now. We've pretty much got control of that, apart from the fact that there's a capping level that um, governments have introduced that if you want to increase it by more than 1.99% or five pounds, then you have to have a referendum. But other than that, at least we've got control over that. Business rates... I just don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, we do have a we do have a Cambridgeshire group uh, of finance officers. We're meeting in a couple of weeks' time, and we are going to be talking about budgets and the sort of inflation factors we might use. We do always have a bit of a discussion around this. Um, <laughs> whether we'll reach a, a conclusion or not, I'm not so sure. But um, certainly, um, yeah, there's there's that. There's also. Um, there's also one or two commentators out there that are, are quite close to central government. We use a guy who um, who works for an organisation called Pixel, uh, and he he um, is quite. I think he talks to MHC or whatever they call themselves these days. Uh, he talks to them on a regular basis. He he has some insight into what's happening. So he helps us with some of our forecasts, both here and more widely in Cambridgeshire. And he often has a bit more insight into, certainly into the funding side from central government than perhaps we have individually. So that's always quite helpful. So yeah, there are there are groups and, and people we talk to, but again, they're they're basing a lot of their information on discussions they've had. So they've probably got a little bit better insight than than myself and others. But again, you know, there's still so much uncertainty in play, unfortunately. Thank you. Um, Stephen Kelly would like to um, comment. So I'm going to go with Stephen next, and then we'll, we have three questions in the, within the room. Stephen, over to you. Thank you, Chair, and um, uh, apologies for lighting. I'm sitting in the back of my car in Cambridge at the moment, but um, hopefully you can see me. It was just really responding to your question about forecasting the effects of COVID. Um, and just to reassure you, what we have been doing in the planning service, uh, and it's a, it's very much a, a an ongoing process, is looking at uh, the anticipated applications that we we think are coming forwards, both in South Cams and the city, uh, over the um, through things like our planning performance agreements, but also the discussions that we're having with developers. And we're, tr we're constantly, in a sense, revising our forecasts about when those fees and when those applications are going to come in. At this moment in time in South Cams, uh, the planning application fee income, because we took some very pessimistic views about forecasts uh, last year because of COVID, is tracking slightly better than we anticipated. But obviously, as we begin to move forward and setting the budget for next year, um, we are keeping under review some of those assumptions. We've had a bit of a boom in householder planning applications, but on the major applications where you get these very sizable and therefore quite lumpy payments, we're tracking that very carefully and obviously checking in with, with developers. So I did want to reassure you that we can't impact whether or not if there's an economic downturn those developers ultimately put an application in 
but certainly uh, the team in the um, uh, shared planning service is tracking and engaging with those uh, developers to try and understand it. And I think the point of, of the note in Peter's paper is really to reflect that question mark that still sits around some of those expectations, notwithstanding um, reasonably good performance on a year down, uh, in our forecast for this year, uh, that we hope um, uh, will will continue because obviously development industry active is is good for jobs and and activities for people in across the across South Cams. But it but I just wanted to offer some reassurance about what we're doing in planning to try and um, uh, at least uh, have the most um, uh, correct position. But it would be right to highlight it as a risk. Thank you. So. Councillor Dr Richard Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, apologies if uh, you, you went through this before I arrived, um, but I, I just wanted to ask a question about the rise in council tax. Um, it's on page 17 in that table um, in our pack. Um, and across the period, it's predicted to go up by what I make around 22% in total. It's about 5%, I think, a year, every year. Um, up to 2027. I was wondering if, you, if, um, if either Councillor Williams or, or Mr. Maddox um, could just give us an idea of, of, of how that's made up. So, what portion of that sort of 5% annual rise it looks like is an increase in the base, and which is an increase in the actual charge? Because it wasn't quite clear to me from reading the document quite how, how the, the rise broke down. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I was just trying, just trying to think whether I've had, I've got those figures to hand. I probably haven't actually here, but I will have back in the office. So um, there's three, there's three factors here. There's obviously the five pound increase, the increase in the council tax base. Um, and we, we've just revisited the increase in the council tax base for uh, next financial year. We've had another look at that, and it looks roughly in line with the figures we've got in here still. There's also um, another factor is um, something that will be coming forward fairly soon around um, council tax for prevention. So um, there's some work being done about increasing the tax base, uh, and that should increase the income from council tax base as a result we're doing with other districts and indeed the county council around um, around single persons discount and things like that. So that a bit of in additional income is being factored in from that as well. But I can get the exact figures uh, and I'll send it around if that's okay. Yeah, that, that, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Martin Khan. I had intended to ask a question about the proposal, the possibility of uh, abolishment, abolishing uh, business space, which has been mooted around uh, in government at the moment. Um, but they, you've given a good explanation on that, but I did wonder when you were talking about uh, council tax um, as a source and business rates as a source, and you said that we were in the top 10 in the country regarding business rates, are we much more exposed than many other local authorities and how does that, uh, what position are we in compared with that? Yeah, so um, when I say we're in the top 10, we're, we're in the top 10 as regards growth on business rates since 13-14. Um, so that does leave us a bit more exposed. Um, there were one, you know, I have actually spoken to a number of other authorities in a similar position to us, such as Churwell is another one that's uh, in the top ten, and Rugby is another one. So there's a number of authorities that have, uh, have got sort of growth areas on business rates, and obviously we're a bit concerned about what might happen with business rates. So. Um, there's certainly an intention when things become clearer to try and get a group together to talk about how best to try and protect the council's position in relation to business rates. Um, yeah, it is interesting that because um, I was talking to um, the person I spoke to uh, spoke about earlier, and he was talking about the abolition of business rates. It sort of comes on the agenda, and then oh, it's all too hard, and it disappears, and it comes back again. And he's, you know, I sort of feel we do need to, you know. This does need to be grasped now. I think we're getting to the stage where it has got quite difficult to justify. Um, and it's been happening over a number of years with all these reliefs and things that have been added into the equation that's made it that much more difficult, A, to predict, uh, and B, it's just, it's just made it so difficult to estimate as well. And 
pretty it's pretty unfair. So I think there is, you know, I think there is a I'm hoping there's finally a need to do something with business rates. But we need to be, you know, we need to make sure we protect South Cam's position in regard to the revenue that it gets. So whatever we can do to make sure that the replacement, you know, doesn't make us financially worse off, the better. So then we, you know, it's obviously something we need to keep a close eye on. Thank you. Councillor Jeff Harvey. No, thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, first off, um, point out a rather obvious typo at the bottom of page 24. I see it says there's more certainty than ever about long-term funding for local government. I think that should be uh, more uncertainty, um, rather obvious. Um, but the main question was really um, moving to page uh, 18, um, paragraph 28, um, we're, we're sort of um, putting quite a lot of store by the transformation um, program to, to bring savings of two million. So it just occurred to me that I suppose a pitfall might be that you would assume um, a saving based on a, a status quo in terms of um, the level of service provided. And I, and I suppose a pitfall might be that actually some of that two million will be eaten up because there are service level pressures in, in, in some departments which might erode those savings. So I just wondered uh, what the position there was. Yeah, so um, as part of this budget process, we're going to have, we're going to need to assess when that two million pounds worth of savings are going to fall. Because um, at the moment, none of the four 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 point four eight nine was quoted doesn't include any of that. So, you know, part of the budget process will be identifying when that two million will fall. But as we as we've said earlier, you know, there are clearly pressures in the opposite direction, more in that direction than. So it suggests to me, as I sit here now, that the 4.489 million has grown. So um, we need to we need to assess how we're going to tackle that. I say the, the two million, I believe, is achievable based on what I know. Um, it's just not. I'm just not entirely sure over what time period that will be realised. And I think it's probably you know over the next two years or so we're probably looking at as the, as the service reviews continue. Councillor Peter Fine. Thank you, Chair. I hesitate to uh, intervene having arrived late, but I think I've just about caught up now. I was um, concerned to hear the, uh, that we're relying on, I think the firm was Pixar, who I thought made um, cartoon films, perhaps a different company, um, uh, who seemed to be talking to the department. Um, it seems to me, in view of the, the criticism that the department has had, including particularly from the uh, Treasury Select Committee, about its what's called a laissez-faire attitude to council finance, and the fact that there are some councils much worse off than ourselves who may actually become the responsibility of the department uh, one way or the other, um, it, it does seem to me extraordinary that, particularly on business rates, which is such a significant risk in this, that we're not able to get more reliable guidance from government, if not on their exact intentions, at least on how councils should cater for and plan for that, uh, bearing in mind our obligations to submit a balanced budget. Thank you, please. It's Pixar, not Pixar, as you probably... <laughs> um, although Pixar... Well, no, I won't. Um, so, um, I mean, the Pixar, the person there... Um, I mean, he does a lot of research, he speaks to people, so he, he gets a feel for what's happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, we don't really know what's going to happen with business rates. Um, I think it's probably fair to say we're, we're stuck with the current regime, probably for at least next year, probably longer than that, given that they're saying we're going to potentially get a three-year settlement, which is good news, because at least it allows us to do a little bit more forward planning and with a little bit more certainty. So um, my guess is that we will, if we see anything drastic happen with business rates, it's going to be two or three years down the line now, um, which as far as I'm concerned is good news, really. Um, I would like more, more certainty, but I, I, I do accept this is a, such a difficult nut to crack, it seems. Uh, and um, 
I think you know I think they've been cautious with falling business rates for at least five years, if not since it first came to fifty percent local retention in thirteen fourteen. Thank you. I have no further speakers, and um, I think if I were to sum this up. I could only say that the only certainty in this is that there is a huge amount of uncertainty. Um, and I think it will take time, but um, if I might just say a word of thanks for bringing this forward. Uh, we were asked to consider and comment, which I believe that we have uh, fulfilled that request. I am incredibly grateful for the fact that you brought this to us at this time, um, so that members are now fully aware of the challenges that the council faces uh, going forward in, in understanding exactly what kind of financial position you'll be in in a few months' time. Personally, I'm glad I don't have to budget five months ahead, let alone five years, because this, really, this is perhaps, uh, in my experience, the most uncertain times that we've had for a very, very long time. So uh, I think we all understand the challenges um, we wish you well. We are asked to acknowledge the protected changes in service spending and the overall resources available and to review and comment on the refreshed medium term financial strategy. And um, I think I can safely say that we've done that and we um, wish you well going forward in putting this together. And we look forward to seeing the final document in, in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just, just, just to sum up uh, and um, to say that we kept, you know, whilst uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, this council is in a good financial position. Yes. Uh, and as Councillor Fain said earlier, there are a lot of authorities who are in a much worse position than we are. So, yeah, they're, yeah, absolutely. So, thank you very much. Let us move on to agenda item seven. And can I just say from the outset that um, this is obviously a in principle commitment to the delivery of the area action plan um, it, at this stage the planning issues which will derive from this will be coming to us at a later stage so I think at the moment we should probably concentrate our minds on uh, any financial aspects of this and we look at the planning issues um, at a later date when we see the actual um, documents coming forward in due course I suspect that that will probably be uh, either much later this year or early into next year. Um, but perhaps I can ask Councillor John Williams to introduce the document. John. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, you, you may wonder why it's me introducing this and not to me. Um, and this is be for that very reason you've just explained, that this is to do with compulsory purchase. It's a technical matter. It's basically saying uh, we, in order for us to uh, demonstrate that the um, air action plan is deliverable, that we need to show that we have in place the um, apparatus, the process, if necessary, to compulsory purchase uh, in order to take that AAP forward, wh whatever that is following uh, consultation. So that's why it's, I'm, I'm presenting this and, and, not, um, and not to me as a lead um, cabinet lead for planning. Um, I mean, it is, it is at, at basically at this stage, um, it, it is showing intent uh, principally to the landowners that will be affected that this council has the means and the, um, as I say, the, the, the apparatus to um, bring together the land that's necessary to see that the AAP is, 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 um, is carried out. So um, there's not much more to say on that. Um, and obviously I think um, Stephen would be happy to answer any questions on, on the other aspects of this. Thank you. Members? Councillor Steve. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, yeah, in our pre-meeting uh, two days ago, I think we did end up discussing 
a number of things that were planning issues until we really looked at it and thought, actually, this is only about CPOs. And I just wonder whether the title could be amended to, uh, to make that clear. Or, or is it a standard form of words which we have to use? Um, I, well, this is obviously for this committee, but um, I, yeah, I'm sure we'll take on board the fact that, that in future maybe um, it should be more to do with um, the technical commitment to deliver the AAP rather than um, rather than a planning strategy behind the AAP. Um, however, you know, I think it is a and Stephen could explain this, but we need to have an in principle, um, yeah. you know, that's that's the technical term in order to deliver the AAP. So in effect, the title is correct, although I, I accept that to a lay person it may mean something else. Stephen, would you like to comment on that? Um, well, if I can ask, uh, perhaps easiest to ask, uh, not least because he's not in the dark like me, uh, <laughs> Chair, um, I can ask Matthew Patterson to, to comment. It, it, as as, as Councillor Williams said, it, it is, um, uh, it, it relates to the ambition that I'm sure everybody ha has in terms of the feedback that we've received uh, around a comprehensive uh, rather than a piecemeal approach, but perhaps Matthew can, can explain. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chair. Um, so just to explain why that's titled as it is, um, compulsory purchase order is a sort of last tool of resort, if you like, as well. So in essence, uh, were you seeking to assemble land, you still have to undertake that through normal market processes and practices until such time as you hit a barrier, really, and only then do you uh, necessarily need to use your CPO powers and there are restrictions around those as well. Um, so that's why it's titled the way it is. We, what we could do, Chair, is, is, is clarify um, if, it, if, if it's helpful, we can look at how we can clarify that. Obviously, um, the matter needs to go forward to Cabinet uh, and um, we'll perhaps see if we can reflect that uh, more clearly, but I think in terms of the, the recommendation and the um, resolution that we require ultimately from Cabinet, uh, we've had advice from Council in terms of what that needs to look like. Uh, although um, if there is time before we publish the Cabinet agenda, I think it's due shortly uh, to look at whether we can expand the title um, to, to perhaps add a, almost a sub subtitle to it. Uh, we, we will do so if we, if we can. Thank you very much. So I'm going to come to Councillor Bradnell first. Thank you, Chair. Um, knowing the complexities of land ownership in this area, uh, some of which is in the city, some of which is in South Cam, some of it is Milton Parish, some of it is in private ownership, um, I recognise the need for this sort of um, in principle commitment to be arranged and agreed. Uh, so it, it makes perfect sense to me and I'm fully supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Councillor Cohn. Uh, thanks very much, Chairman. Um, my point was very similar to Councillor um, Bradnam's. I, I, I would guess, I suppose the question I've got is this is a fairly common thing when you've got development of this scale and lots of different land ownerships that you would need to have some sort of principle set. Obviously, if um, uh, CPOs came forward in the, in the future, they would be individually looked at anyway. So I, I think it's fair to have the principle in, you know, given the scale of development and the complexity with land ownership, I, you know, I, would, I would agree. But it, I suppose my question would be, this is quite a common thing with big developments anyway. Councillor Peter Flame. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a, a relatively simple question that doesn't perhaps relate to the core of this. Um, paragraph 24 um, was drawing attention to the uh, significant new housing, 40% of all homes to be affordable. 
title of that uh, paragraph is housing that is truly affordable. I assume that if we're talking about something that is truly affordable, that might involve some capital commitment by the council, since the government's definition of affordable might not meet uh, that term. John. Yes, thank you. That, that refers to one of the principles of our business plan, not uh, uh, which is to uh, the goal is to have housing that is truly affordable to live in. Um, it doesn't directly relate to the AAP. It's just the title of the, that section of the business plan which this is aligned with. Okay. Councillor Van der Thank you very much. Um, th 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 this report and some of the discussion about it has implied that this is something we have to be obliged to do in order to um, uh, uh, progress with the AAP. But it seems to me this is, I mean, a, a hugely positive thing to do to, to um, uh, sort of set out in, in part of a strategy for delivering uh, a development like this and also our own commitment uh, to um, and a willingness uh, to use what powers we have uh, to deliver this. Um, so I, I, I think that an excellent thing that, that should accompany all planning, planning um, applications, uh, uh, approvals regardless of the size, um, not least because when we have made a positive decision um, to allocate or to give approval, it's something that, that we have decided is in the public interest should, should happen, so um, therefore we've got to be delivered. Um, I, I would note in particular that, uh, sort of an aside, that, that this is clearly dependent on the um, uh, what um, treatment works being moved. Um, so, so we're not we're not at this point committing yep. to deliver that, but we're committing to deliver the AAP if that other thing happens. So, which is um, uh, very clearly set out here. Thank you, Councillor Martin Khan. Well, coming back a bit to the point that Councillor Van der Rohe referred to, um, the whole of the, uh, the the major part of the development is dependent upon the uh, DCO for the water treatment plant being approved. Um, now, we'll assume that it will take place, but maybe there's always a possibility that it might not. Um, uh, there's another aspect of it uh, that you can look at, which is also an uncertainty, is that what is proposed is a largely car-free development with no additional traffic along Mil uh, Milton Road. Um, in that sense, it's somewhat experimental. It's, uh, it, it's uh, uh, there's a certain degree of active faith in this. Um, one hopes it would work, but there's always, as we go through the development proceeds, you may find that it's not as successful as you, and you may wish to re review your, your plans. Um, does the commitment that we uh, enter now still stand if either of these sort of uncertainties take place? Would you continue with this uh, commitment, or what would be the situation in that, uh, in that position? John, can you answer that? Um, well, the commitment is is there. Uh, whether it's you know the, the 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 tool is there, whether it's used or not in the future, and that would obviously depend on the eventual AAP. It's not something that I can comment on at this stage. I mean, what we are doing here is just ensuring that we have that tool in the toolbox and that we can therefore demonstrate that, that um, we are able and have the means, if necessary, to bring um, the, the land together in order for us to fulfil the AAP, whatever that happens to be in the future following the decision of this council. But it would be right, I guess, to say that if the water treatment works does not move, the whole thing fails. And through the planning process, it will be necessary for uh, the issue that you've just raised in relation to traffic to be uh, fully considered and dealt with. But that will come at a later stage. Uh, well, it might also relate to the fact that uh, you may still wish to uh, develop some remaining parts of the site. It's not the whole site that is the water treatment work. Uh, and that question would need to be asked, but it may still be necessary. Um, but um, I don't suppose we can just about decide upon that unless we know what the future situation is going to be. Well, the crystal ball is still got no fuel in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Daunton. 
Thank you, Chairman, but my question has already been asked and answered. So. Okay. In that case, Stephen Kelly in the darkness. <laughs> Thank you. The, Thank the you, Chair. Candle, Stephen. <laughs> well, if I if I turn the, if I turn the interior light on, it dazzles everything. So sorry about that. Uh, I look a bit. I put, yeah, ethereal. Um, really, I, th I think just to stress the point that that Councillor Williams has made, which is, which is that um, this is a tool for the toolbox, uh, and uh, and clearly it doesn't predetermine whether or not there is a there is a the, the form of the AAP. Uh, it it also uh, in the event that the water treatment works project does not proceed, um, uh, there may well be a need to think about a different strategy. But what we do know about the site is there is a complex land ownership situation. Uh, and what the community have told us is that um, uh, doing things in a joined up way is really important to them. Uh, and, uh, and, and so um, this resolution uh, isn't the end of it, but it's about um, helping to reassure residents uh, uh, as, uh, uh, amongst many that when the council says where our, our vision is for a comprehensive joined up development, that's exactly what we can deliver for them. Uh, and, um, you know, Councillor Williams has referred to the fact there are two councils here um, uh, and, and complex ownership. Uh, and so I think uh, to pick up on Councillor Khan's point, clearly um, uh, the way in which uh, development in this area comes forward um, uh, may evolve over time, but certainly what we're trying to do through this resolution is is help the council to deliver on commitments that it makes rather than necessarily determining the outcome of 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 the process um uh, at the planning process so um uh, you know i hope that that offers some assurance that uh that it's not premature to do this uh, it, it's actually about uh, strengthening uh, confidence in delivery which which is an important uh, message we've had from local residents Thank you. Um, this, I think, a similar document was being presented to the City Council Strategy and Resources Scrutiny Committee just a few days ago. Can you tell us what the outcome of that was, please? I can. I attended, <laughs> Chair. So, yes, uh, yes, the uh, committee voted in favour and uh, agreed the recommendations the same recommendations as to set out for overview and scrutiny and for cabinet here. Yeah, that's helpful. Are there any other speakers? I have uh, no other speakers, members. Are we satisfied that uh, we should recommend this going forward to cabinet? And uh, in due course, we will understand the outcome. Thank you very much indeed. So. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is item eight, the work program. I would really ask you just to take note of this, but to bear in mind that um, our November meeting does, will have a fairly heavy agenda. Um, there will be uh, four major items on it, one of which is the referral of the planning performance review the investment strategy, the empty home strategy, and um, if it's ready, the area action plan proposed submission and the asset management strategy. So uh, we have suggested that a 4.30 start in view of the uh, number of items on it is probably appropriate. I hope that everyone is able to make that. And it's likely to be at the Guildhall as well, um, because this this room will be subject to a lot of work that's going on at the time. So we'll be in the centre of Cambridge, I'm afraid. Wait, Chairman. Sorry. I didn't quite catch the items that you said on our on page book. Um, under the sec so page fifty two, we've got planning performance. You said the investment strategy, investment strategy for empty homes? Yes. Uh, and the, I think the, North, the area action plan probably going back to December. The other is the asset management strategy, the HRA asset management strategy. So it will be a busy meeting. 
Councillor Daunton. Um, yes, Chair, did you say that we were meeting in the Guildhall? Guildhall, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and this room will not be available for us at that time. And so we have to we have to go to an alternative venue. And with that then, us, I believe that we have Oh sorry. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just I wondered whether there was any uh, room to talk about other other work items that could be put onto the list. You, you approached me some time ago um, yes, I did. about Gypsy Roman Traveller mm -hmm. um, questions, and I I just wanted to, to, to raise that that when I was originally on the scrutiny committee, we set up a task. There was a task and finish group was suggested, and then. Uh, I, I had to step down and Nigel took over um, uh, the position on this committee and obviously COVID came along in the pandemic and lots, lots of things meant that it got, it, it got delayed and delayed and delayed and it's just that I don't see it anywhere here and I just wondered given the training that both you and I attended around um, awareness around Gypsy Roma Traveller needs, um, whether that could be put back onto the, uh, the work agenda with two particular um, focuses. It, I, I can tell you it will be coming forward in the new year. It will? Yes. Okay. I, we have spoken, um, Councillor Whipworth and I have spoken with um, with the Chief Executive and with the Leader of the Council and we have agreed that um, with a lot of work going on at the moment into the local plan, which of course will have a review into some of the aspects of that, um, that we would wait until we would got rather more clarity on, on the direction of travel there, but that once we had that, then we would uh, take note of, of your request and um, get a task and finish group up and running once again. Thank you. With, to, with, with the opportunity to bring some recommendations forward. That's really good to hear. Can I just make one request that, that when we're talking about it and when correspondence, it's not Gypsy, Roma and Traveller issues, it's about meeting the needs of Gypsy Roma and Traveller community members who are resident in South Cambridgeshire. It's not that there's an issue, but it's about meeting needs. Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any other, any other items anyone wishes to raise? In that case, at the remarkable time of 6.27, can I thank you all for your attendance and bring this meeting to a close and I wish you all a very safe journey home. Look forward to seeing you next month.